Liam Collins, former director of the Modern War Institute at West Point, United States, joins Spotlight Ukraine. Hello and welcome. Thank you. So let's talk a bit about the uh, promised uh, Patriot system. How long will it take to train Ukrainian soldiers to operate uh, the Patriot system? Yeah, I mean, it's a fairly advanced system, right? One of the world's best. So it, it probably will take several weeks to actually get them up to speed on it. And then you got to transport the system over there. So you, you're talking, you know, weeks to months before it's going to be able to be gainfully employed by the Ukrainians within the country. So it it's it got to be like mid-January or maybe even uh, the early February days uh, till we see Patriot system on the front line, right? Yeah, I mean, I think you're thinking, you know, early February at the earliest. Um, but until then, right, they have their other... Uh, anti-aircraft and, and, and anti-missile defense systems that they've employed to date that have been able to shoot down 70 to 80 percent of, uh, of of rockets and, and missiles coming in from Russia. Oh, yes. Thank you. Uh, Russia claims that in case United States provides Ukraine with Patriot system, it will definitely lead to escalation. What kind of escalation can it be? What are, what are your thoughts? I mean, Russia hasn't shown it. I mean, they, they can't escalate the conflict. They have all their forces in there. They've been uh, fighting pretty ineffectively to date. So there's really no way for them to escalate this beyond what they're doing other than just trying to shoot missiles at civilian complexes, but that's not really escalating the tactical fight. So uh, Russia is just incapable of, of employing more forces effectively within the within Ukraine. So it's really just uh, uh, propaganda by Russia. Just warts and threats and nothing more. Correct. Yeah. I mean, they don't have the ability. To, if, they, if they could do more, they would actually be fighting more effectively taking Ukrainian terrain, and they're not. Yeah, that makes point. So uh, do we have to expect that the United States can provide Ukraine with much more anti-missile systems to close the sky over the country? Yeah, I mean, that's a, it's a tough thing to do, right? I mean, at the beginning of the conflict, they were shooting down about 30 percent of the, the Russian missiles that were coming in. It's up to about 70 to 80 percent now, and you really want to get that up in the higher 90 percent. Uh, and so they've shown that ability to do it with the, with the Patriot missile systems. Uh, I think they'll be able to get up into the 90 percent percent and, and be able to shoot down many of those Russian missiles. So it's definitely a, a possibility, depending on how many missile systems you're able to employ. Yeah, OK, thank you. And um, can I ask you as an expert, what is your personal um, scenario of the ending of this war? Is it going to be like a negotiation or should we fight till we liberate like Crimea and uh, Donetsk and Lugansk region? Yeah, I mean, this is going to be a, a, a long, drawn-out fight until the territory is liberated, right? I mean, we saw in 2014, 2015, Ukraine never got any closer to getting Donetsk and Luhansk back or Crimea. Uh, uh, and so any kind of negotiated settlement, no one has any expectation that they're going to be able to get that train back. And so it's going to be a, a fight until the territory can be uh, liberated by the Ukrainians because the, the Russians aren't going to end up in any negotiations with any intent of ever giving them back in the long term. So no negotiations, but we know that Russia has already mobilized more than 100,000 of people and there are plans to mobilize more and more. So it's going to be long. Yeah, so I mean, but keep in mind, right, I mean, Russia's best forces were at the beginning of the conflict and those were decimated. Uh, and so as Russia throws more at it, they're less trained, they're ill-equipped. Uh, their morale is even lower than, than the Russians were at the beginning of the war. Many of these people don't even want to be in the military. And so they're, they're putting more forces at it, but they're less and less capable every day uh, that they employ new forces. And the conflict where the Ukrainians, uh, I mean, it's a brutal fight for them, uh, but the morale is there. They're fighting for the defense of their nation, where the Russian, even the Russian military has no idea why they're there. Uh, so they're not motivated. So it will be, it'll be long just because Russia has so many forces. Uh, we got a saying in Ukraine that the Russian army is not big, it's just long. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, you know, big in terms of its effective, I mean, in terms of, the, if sure, numbers, you're counting soldiers, but if you're talking about effective soldiers, you know, I'll take one Ukrainian soldier over 20 Russian soldiers any day. Well, this winter gonna be like the definite moment we can say that after this, Ukraine can win this war. I mean, I think Ukraine has demonstrated already that it can win this war. You know, I think it's just a matter of, of, of time. And, and part of that depends on continuing to get resupplied from the West because they are a smaller military. They have to replace their uh, losses that are attrited throughout the conflict. But as long as they're able to replace their combat losses, uh, Ukraine has demonstrated over the last 10 months and really within the first month of the war on the defensive key that they can win this. It's just a matter of of time and commitment by, by Ukraine and, and, and by uh, its supporters.
Uh, ben Hodges already said that um, Ukraine can liberate Crimea till the end of summer 2023. I agree. Can we rely on that uh, forecast? No, I, I think it's going to take longer than that, especially long, if you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be years, several years. Is, is several is years. I'm, I mean, to, to liberate everything, I think Crimea is going to be its, its own challenge there. I mean, uh, you, you see how slow it's, I mean, we, Ukraine's been able to make some of these large advances right down in Kurzon and outside of Kharkiv, but keep in mind, right, that's where Russian forces were not massed. As Russia gets cons constricted into a smaller and smaller space, right, even though they're less capable, they're not a, a very capable fighting force, they're, they're still, a, 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 right, they're still capable of, 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 of fighting. Uh, and so that's going to be the challenge, right? As Russia gets into a smaller and smaller space, it's harder for Ukraine to dislodge them. So that's why it's really, towards the end, it's actually harder to dislodge than, than easier. And we, we, do keep, we, like, we do keep in mind that Russia has nuclear weapons. Uh, what is the chance that Russia can use the nuclear weapon? Is just the threats, like warts, or there's going to be, like, the moment... Uh, Putin says no, I think it's, 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 it's just words and threats. I mean, if you go back to the end of the right, the beginning of the Cold War, no nation has ever employed nuclear weapons. It, it's a weapon that establishes right a really good defensive measure. Right, it, it prevents other nations from necessarily invading you, but no one has used them, and that's a norm that's you know driven through the Cold War, through regimes, through you know stressful times historically that are worse than the days we're in now. Uh, and, and Russia understands that if it employed nuclear weapons, it would be a significant game changer. Uh, and, and Russia is just not going to do something like that. But yes, but if, if Putin uses it, so what are the consequences? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's extremely unlikely they would use it. I, I think you'd really see Russia be isolated. They, they wouldn't, no one would buy their oil, natural gas, right? It, their allies that they have within, you know, semi-support from, uh, you know, whether it's buying goods or whatever, China, India, uh, Iran, right? They're going to be in a position where they're no longer enabled to engage in trade, support with them. Effectively, Russia would be completely isolated from the rest of the world, the international system. But and, Russia and, is, is already pretty isolated. Can we do that just to prevent the nuclear threats? No, to put uh, more Russia's, and more sanctions right now. And yeah, to get I mean, Russia is only semi-isolated from the international system. I mean, with the West, they're still, you know, selling uh, gas and oil. I mean, in terms of, right, China, India... Uh, there's still a lot of trade going on there. So those sanctions, when you look at those, those are really Western sanctions with Russia, not international sanctions against Russia. Um, do you think that the, Mr. Putin right now is the most dangerous person all over the globe? Yeah, I mean, I think, right, I mean, presently he, he's the most dangerous because of what he's, I mean, he's engaging in an international conflict that's just, you know, unheard of in recent times. So w without a doubt... Uh, and, and he's got a large nuclear arsenal. So those two things, you know, make make him probably the most dangerous. Yeah, I'm asking this question. If he is ready for negotiations. No, I, I know Russia's in the position of a negotiation. You got to look at it. what would Russia have to gain by negotiating, right? Um, are, are they willing to just, hey, basically draw the lines where they all are now, right? Effectively. And, and I don't think Russia's willing to do that. He has to demonstrate a, probably a larger win than that, right? He, he went to the war with multiple war aims. Really, he would have to at least get all of Donetsk and Luhansk. Yep. And then maybe that could appease him. But at the same time, Ukrainians would never agree to that. And so there's no overlap between the two. But Russia would have to achieve some kind of victory that it could sell to its populace. And at a minimum, that would be Donetsk and Luhansk. Thank you. Thank you once again for your answers. Liam Collins, former director of the Modern War Institute at West Point, was the guest of Spotlight Ukraine, and we continue. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Latest news, trends, and analytics on all about Ukraine. Like, share, and subscribe. Any questions, proposals, and comments, contact us via email.